Welcome in this next section part of the iOS application attack service. If you're watching this from YouTube, make sure to also subscribe to the free training on mobilehackinglab.com so you can also get access to the workbooks and follow along. So what are web views? A web view is basically a browser within an app. So you can use it to navigate to a website or also to load HTML files which are part of the app. And web views are also part of the user interface kit within Apple. So we already talked earlier about input validation issues like cross-site scripting and HTML injection. This part I will keep short in this video. And within the user interface kit, you can pick different types of web views as a developer. So the first one is the user interface web view. But this one is already deprecated for over 10 years. So if you're using this one, then you might already be vulnerable by default. Because in this web view, for example, you cannot disable JavaScript. Then the second one is the most common web view you will find within iOS applications. It's called the WebKit web view. So WebKit is the browser engine also used by Safari and a lot of other products of Apple. And they open sourced it a while ago. And within the WebKit web view, still JavaScript is enabled by default, but you can also disable it. And also within this browser, an alert is not possible. So if you want to test for cross-site scripting, the default alert test case will not work. And there's also a Safari view controller. And in this screenshot, we will see an example of this Safari view controller. So if you're using the Safari type, then within the app, you cannot get access to the specific components, but you do share cookies with the Safari browser. So let's quickly look into the documentation of OAS. So if you go to the OAP mobile application security testing guide and then iOS platform APIs, it also explains that there are three types of web views, user interface web view, which is deprecated starting from iOS 12, so already quite some years ago, and it should not be used. And if you don't have access to the source code, you can also do a very basic check with strings. So for example, strings, then vulnerable iOS application v2, so the Mac O binary, and then we will do a grab, case insensitive, and then for example, user interface web view. And then you might notice there are still some results. And the other web view is the WK web view. So with this basic grab, we already find out that there are different types of web views used. And if I do the same, for example, in the Threads app, then you might notice that user interface web view will not return any results and WebKit web view returns a lot of results. So those are just some basic checks. And if you do have access to the source code, so again, in this damn vulnerable iOS application, then we have, for example, this client-side injection detail view controller, which imports the user interface kit, and then it's using this user interface web view, so the deprecated one. And then it also does something with web view load HTML string. So this sounds pretty unsafe already. So within the web view, there are also some unsafe methods. Again, I can show this on the lab device. And then there is just an input field. And then I can input something like script alert. And then the alert will also trigger. And if you're using the WebKit web view, you will not notice this alert. Then there is one topic I would also like to cover because there's also a hacking lab related to this. This topic is the JavaScript bridge, or also called the JavaScript to native bridge. So within the HTML code of an app, for example, you can call a function which is defined in your Swift or Objective-C file and also the other way around. So this is why it's called the JavaScript to native bridge. And to test for vulnerabilities in this JavaScript to native bridge, you can look into the OWASP documentation again, and then you should focus mainly on the testing WebKit WebView JavaScript to native bridge. And then there is one demo app which we're also going to use, which is the Where is my browser app. So first within the code and within the app, you can set a toggle to enable or disable the bridge. If you enable the JavaScript bridge, then it will create a so-called JavaScript bridge handler with a specific name. And then you can create an HTML file. And within this HTML file, you can do something like this, window WebKit message handler JavaScript bridge, so the name of the bridge, and then you can do a so-called post message. And with this post message, you can call a Swift function from HTML. 
So the Swift function is called multiply numbers and it has two input parameters. And to enable this, there's also a JavaScript bridge message handler. And there the different functions or different calls which are possible via post methods are defined. So there is one case, multiply numbers, which, we, which is used in the app. And there's also a case, get secret. So the goal is to trick the app into also providing this information. So this is the app we're going to use, where's my browser? And then you can go to the GitHub repository. And then you can go to releases and download the IPA file. And for now I installed this app on the simulator because the web view can be quite small, so I hope it's better readable. So this app has a user interface web view which is deprecated and also a WebKit web view. So this is just a browser where you can go to example.com or something like that. And one thing to demonstrate here, if I can do JavaScript alert one, for example, then it is working in the user interface web view, but we also have the WebKit web view. And if I try the same JavaScript alert one, and it will not trigger in this WebKit web view. Now let's go to the third scenario. So what is also enabled in this web view is loading local files. So this is something else you can also abuse. Let's check out this function. So this is just a multiply function. So 3 multiply 3 is 9. And then there is an exploitation helper to simulate an attack. So for example, if you could do some cross-site scripting attack, or you could do maybe some form where you can post messages, then this simulates this. So what we can do here, we can find the HTML element, which is called result, and then we can change the value. And if we look into the source code of this app I'm running on the simulator, then there is a so-called JavaScript bridge message handler, and within this message handler, there are different cases or different functions from JavaScript. So one is called multiply numbers, and the second one is called get secret. So the thing we need to do is win window, WebKit, message handlers, JavaScript bridge, post message, and then get secret. And this is also the solution mentioned on OWASP. So first we do need to make a JavaScript callback function, and then we can indeed do a post message to get the secret. And now if we execute this HTML or JavaScript code, then it will show the secret in this HTML element result. So instead of showing it here, we could also send it to an attacker, for example. And I also created a similar app where we also use a web view and then we just render in the HTML. So this is also quite an unsafe function. And this app looks like this. So you can post some messages and you might also be able to insert HTML because it's just rendered as HTML. But if I try to do something like script alert one, because it's in WK web view, this will not be executed. Then there's also one payload I can use. So window.native bridge post message and then command get session token. So in this case, I might be able to trick a user into getting a session token, for example, or some secret. So it's just an example that you can get data from Swift again. And in combination with some bad HTML sanitizing, for example, you can click on get session token, and then you will get the data from Swift. And then we have one hacking map called Frescard, which is related to a vulnerability in the JavaScript to native bridge. So in this lab, you also need to steal tokens by exploding a vulnerability in the native bridge. So please also try this lab if you want to learn more about this topic. And this was it about the attack servers of WebViews. So hope to see you in the next video or in the exam because this was the last video of the attack servers. So thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next training.